Hi everyone! Today's project is the stone curtains. What is it and why? I hope it will become clear later in the video. This structure is two and a half meters high and of course it is made of stone. So we have to split it into five more convenient to install parts. So let's start with the CNC. This is the first part of the green room project. Everything here is made of sandstone. I really love this material, very easy to machine. But despite that fact, it's still a stone. And they need to grind a lot of this stone back into sand. One blank weighs about 250 kilos. After processing should weigh about 60. If I have to remove 200 kilos of material, I want to do it as efficiently as possible. My workflow is this. First facing operation. I want to make sure that my blank is flat. Second, cut out the part along the contour. This way I can lead in the tool from outside sideways during roughing machining, instead of plunge it gently vertically. It really saves a lot of time. Third, tool constant engagement. I try to make my tool cut material instead of air. I try to reduce the number of cutter rapid travels over the material as much as I can. And of course, you need to know your machine, material and tool capabilities. If I'm working with new material, I do a little test. I increase the speed and feed more and more and until I reach the limit or break the tool. And after that, I step back a third to the zone that I consider safe. This way, I can be sure that I use all the capabilities of the equipment and the tool. Here is the result after roughing. Here I can still increase the step of finishing step downs from 5 to 20 mm. My finishing tool can handle it easily, it will save a huge amount of time. And finishing. Here the processing speed mainly depends on the surface quality that you want to achieve, so I am in no hurry trying to get the best surface finish. So let's move on to the pre-assembly. Since the manufacturing process is the same, I made the rest of the parts of camera. And now I need to lay everything out on a flat surface to fit the joints between the parts. I use a calibrated granite slab as a flat surface since the table must withstand decent weight without deflection.
To simplify the task of fitting the joints, I milled a piece of baseboard along with the frame as one piece. Otherwise, it would be much more difficult to fit one to the other. After I laid out all the details, I mark where and how much material needs to be removed for a smooth join. And the first step is to remove the traces of the cutter on the back side, to ensure a good fit of the part to the wall. Then remove the rim that was formed as a result of the geometry of the tool. Next, everything that I can remove with the grinder without the risk of damaging the part. I finished the last joints and surface defects manually, since in the first place it is difficult to get into the small folds with the power tool, secondly there is a big risk of damaging the surface with a grinder, and it is also much easier to manually move along the curvature of the surface without disturbing the smoothness of the lines. Manual finishing of sandstone is not so difficult, just need a little patience.
Here is one little trick. I'm not trying to level the entire joint surface. I just remove all the material that is not visible from the outside, leaving only a small edge around the perimeter for the joint. And now installation. I start from the bottom up, allowing each row to dry throughout the day. For gluing stone with drywall, I use Saudel sealing glue. It does not have such a large selection of colors, but it is reliable. And they will fit the color of the seam later with the decorative sealant. If all measurements and fittings were correct, the only thing that will need to be cut to size on the side is the baseboard. I cover all the joints with tape, so as not to stain the stone with the adhesive of a darker color. Since then, it will be necessary to fill the seam with the sealant that matches the color of the stone. It remains only to install the top part and the front will be finished. Stay tuned for the next video in which I will install Windows seals, but as always with a twist. Thank you for watching.